Hello. My name is Rory. This is the Varietal Show. With me today is Felix. Um, let me know if the sound isn't mixing right or if it's too loud. How are you today, Felix? I am doing pretty well. As you can see, it's quite sunny here. A nice day. It, get, um, it gets quite warm in Hong Kong, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, can, can you hear my air conditioner going off in the background? I actually, actually? can't, and I envy that because... Okay. I have an air conditioner and I can't run it right now um, because uh, it picks up on the the mic. Absolutely. Hey, chat. What, what, are, you, what are you doing with a with an air conditioner? Like nobody in Canada has an air conditioner. Why do you have one? <laughs> you know what? Suki's gonna hear that, and then she's gonna make a thing out of it. A hundred percent. I need an air conditioner. I am ethnically Swedish, Scottish, and a bit of English. Now what that means <laughs> is anything over 20 degrees is a desert. Okay, okay. I, you know what, I, I agree completely. I agree, I know how you feel. <laughs> you deserve that, Eric. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> All right, guys, here's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna give some recommendations. Um, book recommendation and a movie recommendation really quick off the bat here then we're going to talk about uh what we're well we're going to do our lit game our lit game is building backstories for stock photos and hang around because we will definitely be using some of that going forward i'll explain how that connects a little later on we'll finish off with a little bit of unqualified advice if you are a new or amateur writer who um, wants to know how the rest of the world uh, looks at writing or how to do it. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're also going to try and run a little shorter because um, I know uh, two hours is a pretty long time for us to stream, especially me without air conditioning, Felix. Um, <laughs> I get grumpy when I'm uh, when I'm hot. And you're wearing you're wearing like a little sweat, uh, you know, a dress shirt too, and it. I don't think that just keeps on heat. Show must go on. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's start with our section, Left on Red. Left on Red is where we talk about books that we left on red. Um, and uh, books that we liked or movies that we liked um, or story delivery systems <laughs> that we enjoyed. Uh, because uh, actually a lot of people asked for our recommendations. So Felix, do you have a recommendation in mind? Uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I I thought Left on Red was referring to something else, like some game about text messages. I don't know. It was just us recommending books and movies. Um, but I, I do I do have something kind of you know, off the beaten path. What, what you um, meant to say was, boy, Rory, that's clever. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good name. <laughs> oh, sh don't don't patronize me. The cat's out of the bag now. All right. Okay. What's your recommendation, Felix? Yeah. Over the past week, I've been for reasons unknown to me. I, I went back and I rewatched all the the Final Destination movies. Okay. Like. <laughs> okay. From one to five. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there were five. Honestly. <laughs> and I never realized how Canadian they were. Yeah, they're all filmed they're, here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're all filmed in Vancouver except for the fourth one. And, you know, you, you recognize landmarks and, like, even the trees. You're like, wait a minute. Like, these trees. This is, this is freaking Vancouver. And I don't know. Like, as a kid, I, I, I thought they were horror movies, right? Uh, they are. scary movies. Yeah. Well... <laughs> I mean, I mean, in, in on paper they are, but like watching it now, I, I get a sense that like you know there, there's like dark comedy, for sure. But uh, a lot of horror behind it. That. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, I just didn't get that as a kid. But like w watching it now, um, kind of like laughed my way through it. And <laughs> I would recommend the first two movies because they're right. actually uh, pretty decent in uh, in terms of writing. Like like it, it feels like they they know what they're doing. There's a little self awareness there. You're living up to your name, Wildcard Wong. 
<laughs> I, if you had told me ahead of time that you were uh, going to recommend Final Destination 1 and 2, I would have thought you were kidding. All right. No, I mean, that's completely legitimate. I mean, entertainment is entertainment. It's, it's fun. I'm going to do something a lot less colorful. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to recommend um, Albert Camus' The Plague, um, which, uh, depending on how you look at it, is either going to be a bad idea to read right now or a great idea, uh, because it is about a town in France that gets the plague. And he based it largely on, like, the Black Death. Uh, he himself, I believe, never actually lived through a plague, but um, he... Um, he writes about it very ably uh, for someone who didn't go through it and being someone who's gone through a, basically a plague. Um, I'm recommending it's Camus, so it's existential. Uh, it's slow burn. It's, you know, a lot of philosophy. It's very dark. Um, you can't really expect a lot of great endings. Sometimes stories just kind of meander because that's sort of his point is that life kind of meanders and you enjoy moments in it. That said, though, it's told from multiple perspectives, which are bound together by a journalist um, and uh, whose viewpoint that we see the whole story from. And I think it's just really cool to read like what was consistent uh, in his reading of uh, a plague and a lockdown. And basically they get shut in a city and no one will let them out for several months. Um, and just the weird kind of relationship you start to have with the the continuous looming of death and if you're not into any of that you can watch final destination one and two which is about <laughs> death but in a funny way <laughs> yeah exactly i like how we cover both sides of the spectrum here yeah now you probably i should say people have probably heard of albert camus the plague um it's not like a, a niche book that I'm recommending. It's an older book, though. It's from like the 40s. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a book I read in pieces throughout the shutdown. And um, at times it was creepy, like to just how similar things were. And other times it was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, cathartic. It was nice to, to see that there was some shared experience. So I'm gonna recommend that. Interesting. Like, like it, it doesn't feel like it misses the mark in terms of the uh, the quarantine experience. No, I, I mean, okay. So it's a bit different in the sense that they aren't quarantined in their house. The city itself is quarantined, but there is discussion about like who braves going out and tries to pretend nothing's going on versus the ones that never leave, and like it, it has a lot of it has a lot of things that I think you'd find familiar. Um, Nathan says he still can't drive behind logging trucks. That's a reference to Final Destination. Yeah, Final Destination 2, I swear, like Final Destination 1 scared half the planet to death from flying for a bit. And then Final Destination 2 scared people from going on highways. <laughs> Is that 2? I thought that was 1. I don't remember. Yeah, that was 2. That was 2. <laughs> you, should, you should watch it, maybe. Uh, maybe uh, maybe I will. Right? Maybe I will. I mean, I should say I have a lot to watch, so... Um, right. Maybe not. Also, uh, going back here, I'll go back to our main screen for a second here, because it's not about our left on right. Our left on right is done. Our recommendations are Final Destination 1 and 2 and Albert Camus, The Plague. Um, but um, I should also add really big news. Uh, we crossed 35 subscribers. We're up to 36 subscribers right now, which uh, honestly, I didn't think we would get that many. That's That's really exciting. Um, and I had made a promise that um, I would <laughs> buy Felix wooden clogs. Oh no! Um, if we uh, if we cross thirty five subscribers, and um, I'm happy to say that I have narrowed it down to a few choices, and I will be buying him <laughs> clogs. And then uh, you can look forward to a review on wooden clogs from Felix. Um, he doesn't know that, but I'm going to make him do it. Um, because I want to know. People like, will hear me coming like a mile away. <laughs> well, not say so you have to like wear it around the city, unless chat insists on it, then you'll have to. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, that was a big, uh, that was a big milestone for us. Um, I'm thinking of something that we can do if we get to 50 subscribers. 
I don't have anything yet. But um, I will let chat know when I do. Holly says, I thought of Final Destination every time I went to a tanning bed or the Wendy's drive through in Maple Ridge. <laughs> Wendy's drive through You know what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. There, there, there's, a, there's a death filmed. I think it was in Burnaby, I think. I don't think it was in, I don't think it was filmed in Maple Ridge. But yeah, it was a fast food delivery uh, window. Uh, quite violent. And yeah, it makes you look think twice before going to one of them drive throughs I can't, I can't eat. My imagination is, is, is exhausted on that. <laughs> All right. So let's get to why a lot of people are here. Let's get to our lick games. Um, so our lick game today is that we are going to look at stock photos and then chat. You're going to help us. We're just going to sort of collaboratively do this. You're going to help us come up with some characters uh, based on the photo things that you think happened in their backstory, what kind of read do you get from their eyes, what their names are, things like that. And uh, I'll also mention that my intention, we'll see how it goes though, <laughs> my intention is that we use these characters in uh, something next week on Lit Games uh, so that we can see how these characters interact. So I will say that these characters need to belong to the same world. Um, all right. Or they don't have to. They can come from different portals. <laughs> <laughs> the happening. Um, <laughs> all right. So our first photo, uh, Felix, um, if you scroll down in your Google Doc, you'll see it, um, is this gentleman here. So, chat. Let's take a minute. Let's really breathe in the details. What kind of story do we get from this fellow with his short cropped hair and his muscular physique? <laughs> Is he muscular? I can't really tell. I mean, well, he's more muscular than us. Not that that's an accomplishment. That is very true. <laughs> um, more muscular than the hosts. All right, Felix, what are you getting? Uh, he looks like the type of guy you'd see at a frat party who, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. picks up all the girls that you want to pick up and then <laughs> all you can do is kind of eye him in envy. This is getting real specific. <laughs> and he's probably like a pretty nice guy, so you can't really say anything too bad about him, but at the same time. All right. And you can tell he goes to the gym a bit and it's like, ah, well, maybe I should go to the gym a little bit. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sure the cat is, uh, the cat, the chat is just catching up, but, uh, chat, let me know what, um, what you see when you see this guy. So if you scroll down a bit, Felix, you will see where we can write mm. stuff. Um, right. fill in whatever makes sense for you. What kind of job do you think he does? Ooh, imagine he has rich parents. Hmm. So he really doesn't need to work. He probably trades stock and there, yeah, loses like a lot of money in his okay. spare time. Okay. He <laughs> is. His occupation is an amateur... Money loser. <laughs> stock trader. <laughs> slash Bitcoin trader. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy is probably like, he, this is a real person. <laughs> Let's hope he never finds this. You're gonna be like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Nathan says military cadet. Oh, okay. Well, I like that. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe he's going know. to a military. With those eyebrows? What? With those eyebrows? Are those allowed in the military? Eyebrows, thick eyebrows like that? <laughs> Do they make you like, you know, take care of eyebrows? Okay. Okay. We need to get some of this down. Okay. Um, backstory. He uh, maybe he went to. Um, uh, Hmm. No, I'm on the wrong line here. Well, Holly says he's an IT progr programmer and he collects high-end runners. The high-end runners make sense to me because a lot of Asians seem to like that. He definitely collects <laughs> high-end runners. I'm not going to make sweeping statements about any ethnicity, but you make all the ones you want about Asians. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm allowed, I guess. I should he collects advantage on this. high-end sneakers. <laughs> he has enrolled in the military hoping for a tech position 
What, what a cultured person. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so his Nathan says they made an exception for his eyebrows. Um, hoping for a tech position, so his his background in um, making a how to Bitcoin. <laughs> Page on Word, WordPress <laughs> can be utilized. <laughs> All right, he collects high-end sneakers. He has enrolled in the military, um, but he's hoping for a tech position in the military um, so that he can make use of his background of making a WordPress page about how to Bitcoin. <laughs> Well, he wants to turn the military's trillions into, like, bajillions. <laughs> uh, Holly says, he, uh, you, you can type this in. Holly says he has young a younger brother that his parents are terribly disappointed in. <laughs> <laughs> should, what should his younger brother be named, Felix? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got to be Felix. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i forgot about bring that back the, yeah we've got to bring back felix ladies and gentlemen that is a callback if you haven't seen that go back and watch some of the old lick games uh, i think that was that was the fan fiction one i think it's called lick games it's fan fiction time um okay uh well, these are great chat you're coming up with great stuff um i think i think his he like He's kind of obsessive about cleanliness in his fashion, but he tries to look casual. Like, like he's buying like a hundred and fifty dollar t-shirts that are fitted, but he's trying to like right. play them like they're just sort of his gym shirt. How does that fit for <laughs> you? Yeah, you know I like that. <laughs> who wears teal? Right? Like, well, okay. well, who pulls off teal? <laughs> well, not me. Um, Suki says this is too real. <clears throat> um, did you did you get that down? Or you want me to get that down? Um, yeah, he... slide. Let, allow me. <laughs> well, actually, you, yeah, you phrased it better than I can. The only reason I'm not typing is I wanted to keep the picture up. Um, oh, okay. okay. The uh, yeah, I, I can get that. No, nah, that's okay. I'm already down here. That's all right. The failure has happened. <laughs> um, I need you to start thinking of a name. That goes for you too, chat. While I write this. Um, and you and Felix need to come up with a name for this guy that really captures all this. <clears throat> it's got to be like, uh, it's got to have a touch of douchiness. Yes. It. I mean, the classic is like Chad, but that's not really like an Asian name. I feel like you would have something more in that <laughs> direction. Oh, uh, you know, I, I've never met a Steven that I have liked. So, <laughs> in right. my mind, Steven Chad, is always one of those names. Chad, how do you feel about Steven? And if it is, with a PH or with a V? Ooh, gotta, gotta <laughs> be with a PH, I think. All he says is English name. Well, if, if he's gonna have two names, I, I gotta rely on you for the second one there, Felix. I, I don't, I know that you have a really interesting story on why you're named the way you are. Well, it's interesting to us. It's not interesting to you. <clears throat> because Felix is not, in case anyone has put it together, a, um, um, uh, a, a Hong Kong name. Where did, Fe why did, actually, why were you called Felix? Actually, I found out recently that, uh, Felix is actually a uh, rather popular English name here. There are quite a few Felix Wongs. Yes, but its <laughs> its origins is um, Italian, is it not? Yes, yes. And you told I, me I think... that in the early 90s... Yeah. Um, finish the story, I'm typing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think once upon my time, my, my parents picked up a, a, a dog... Uh, off like some street market thing. Apparently, they used to sell dogs on the street, like live dogs as pets, not not to be eaten. No, that's mainland China here. <laughs> you know, you can eat dogs, but you you could 
buy them on, on like the gray market sort of uh, like I think people breed them on their own and then bring them out to sell and my parents bought a dog for cheap and like it was not healthy they right. tried to save it take it to the vet a bunch of times and heard it cost a lot of money but after a few months it passed away and I think when they had me they, they believed that I was somehow the dog coming back to life to, to thank them just Okay, this is not, not the story that I heard, but this is much well, more what was interesting. That you, heard? you just said that there was a fad in Hong Kong at the time to give kids right. white names um, right. <clears throat> for various reasons. Right. But this is way better. Your parents thought you were a, you were named after a dog. Uh, yeah, I was named after a dog, and not a cat. Supposedly, I mean, like maybe if I asked my mom today, she'd have a different story. But that, that was what I was told as a kid. This is um, great. Yes, there was a fad with <laughs> weird English names. Uh, yeah, I've met people named like Paper. <laughs> oh. I'm sure we have some equivalent over here. I'm sure, but that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it looks like Chad is leaning towards a Jason. Nathan did say Stephen with a PH, but Jason is oh, pretty Jason's good. Jason's pretty good too. Yeah. Jason, uh, I'm going to leave the last name to you. What's a common last name? I think he's Chinese. It's got to be like Lee or Wong. Those are those are popular, but... Isn't Jason Lee in... in no. Isn't, I'm, I'm thinking Jet Isn't that an actor? I was going to say, isn't that an actor? But no, I'm mixing Jason Statham with Jet Li. <laughs> no, <laughs> might, I mean, I'm sure Lee he's too? an actor. It's a common name, but not one I know. Yeah. Isn't there a white guy named Jason Lee? Or my oh crazy? yeah, there is. Oh my god, yes. Right there is, right? Uh, Holly says my daughter is named after a guinea pig. That's right. Oh. Do you know what I'm named after? I I have no idea. No. A guitarist. An Irish. I don't guitarist. know any. I don't know any. Uh. What's what's the guitarist's name? Rory Gallagher. And we have a bird named Gallagher. They should have named you Gallagher. Gallagher would have been a cool first name. No, Gallagher in the 80s was a comedian who uh, whole bit was just smashing watermelons. So I think I've dodged a bullet there. Uh. All right, chat. So we have Jason Lee here. He's an amateur stock trader and Bitcoin trader. He collects high-end sneakers. He's enrolled in the military. He's hoping for a tech position. So his background in making a half to Bitcoin page, Word, WordPress page, Jesus, type much, can be utilized. He has a younger brother, Belix. <laughs> his parents, who, who his parents are terribly disappointed in. He spends a fortune on simple clothes that he tries to pass off as casual or gym clothes. Um, is there anything else we should add, chat, before we move on to the next one? Anything you want to add, Felix? I don't know. He's prone to be punchable. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, personal statement. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much hate for this guy. He just looks like a, a warm guy to me. I, I, I don't know how to share this hate. How did you find his picture? Did you did you were uh, you looking up any specific keywords or? Uh, nope. I just picked. Yeah, you know, like some stock photos are so bland you can't really pull character out of it. But I picked ones that I felt like had character. <coughs> oh, my mom said the bird came first. Sorry, Felix. Um, Gallagher, the bird what came bird? first. It's oh, a okay. it's a cockatoo. It's still alive, by the way. Cockatoos live a very long time. He's overly invested in his car. Oh, that's perfect. How did we miss the car? Thank you, Holly. Felix, of course he's he's way too into his car. He, oh, what kind of car? Uh, 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 ne it's gotta be a Nissan. But a it's Nissan. gotta be a Ricer of some sort. Uh, oh no, a Mitsubishi Ezo Evo, that's right. He's way into his car, which is a 1999 Mitsu Ushin. Oh, Hikai, you, you know the year too off the top of your head. Lancer 
Evo. I, I actually know more about cars than I would admit. Would you say that Jason Lee is somehow a portrait of you? <laughs> Me and my sneaker collection. I have a sneaker collection, but they're not stylish. I just you know, consistently don't throw out shoes. It's just like New Balances and like Adidas. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Um, okay, so this is the next one. Um, <clears throat> oh, what are we getting from this? Got to get the vibe. She's not as, as like openly funny, but these don't have to be funny. She seems like an interesting person. It's like a story on her face. What are you getting? You're probably getting something way, way outside of what I'm getting. <laughs> uh, I'm getting like a music teacher. A music teacher. That's great. Yeah. I like that. Okay. That's canon. Music teacher. That's canon. <laughs> I mean, okay. Unless chat, unless you have something better. Because chat, chat wins every battle here. <clears throat> I would have gone like a poet or something like that. Oh, okay. Nathan okay, says a writer or a music. nurse. Maybe, maybe she's, um, hmm. Oh, Holly's got a good one. This is Verna. She's a professor of women's lit at the University of Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> She voted for our man. She lives with her partner on a house. I think Holly's doing this for us. <laughs> I really do like music teacher, but um, it's so specific. The professor of women's lit. Professor of women's lit. But ex music teacher, now professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We could say that. Um, former music teacher now professor women's led at uvic um she voted for our mayor well i don't know your mayor um <laughs> she lives Is with her, her partner on a houseboat i like that she lives with her partner on a houseboat what else are you getting felix uh I don't know, the, the black and white gives her a rather ominous vibe. So you feel she's ominous? Like she has secrets? Yeah, I think she might moonlight as a, some sort of a bank robber. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! I love it! I love it! She's taking down the patriarchy one bo bank at a time. <laughs> and she seems like she would just do that for fun. She, does, she would just throw all the money away or burn it. This is great. I want to write a story about this person. <laughs> what else is chat saying? Verna is perfect. Nathan says, leave my workplace out of this. <laughs> yeah, he works at you, Vic. Okay. <laughs> All he says, music therapist. So he says, she reminds me of someone I work with who is quite intelligent, especially about nature. Oh, okay. Sure. Loves going for walks and can name most plants. <laughs> <clears throat> Knows which mushrooms to forage. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knows what mushrooms to forage. I'm getting, I mean, based on this backstory, I'm getting kind of a... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? That bomber that was that had a campaign that lasted like 20 years. Um, Ooh, what kind of bomber had a campaign that lasted 20 years? Well, he basically just lived a really, really rustic life. Um, and uh, it was impossible to track. And he was all anti society, and that's why he was bombing things. Yeah, he was also kind of nuts. But he was a professor. Well, he wasn't a professor, I don't think. He 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 was uh, had like a PhD in mathematics or something. All right. What country was this in? 
Uh, America. Sorry. Was of course. Was formerly a champion kickboxer. Okay. In her youth. Our characters. This is not the way to write characters. They're way too three dimensional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, this is what they tell you to do um, when you're supposed to write characters. By the way, um, you're supposed to basically try to lay out some details about them. And every time I do it, I start writing them, and they change on the page. And I think we might see oh, that happen. Um. I'm getting birds, like she has a bird tattoo, feather earrings, she uses feathers in her music therapy, okay. Um, has <laughs> a tattoo, I mean, of what bird? Like, what's a significant bird, uh, chat? What's, like, something that would really make her, um, would be symbolic here? Um, has a tattoo of some type of bird. Whereas... Hand made feather earrings. Um, yeah, give it, give me a bird, uh, a chat, and w once I, we figure that out, maybe we'll look at the third. Holly says it's always owls, but why owls? Like, there's got to be a symbolism to it. Because, I mean, the obvious one is like a raven. Ravens are usually about death or spirits. Um, do you know of any symbolism for birds, Felix? Uh, is, this, is a phoenix a bird? Uh, not a real one, but... <laughs> I mean, how do you know? Um, <laughs> well, i got a substantial body of evidence. Have you seen Harry Potter? <laughs> I have. Felix... Never thought I'd really have to ask this, but um, are you under the impression that that's a real place? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never been to the UK, so until I have, I'm going to keep my mind open to the possibility. Well, well, <laughs> Felix, let me pop this bubble. There is, <laughs> there is nothing like Harry Potter in the, the UK. <laughs> Uh, Holly says because of the window wisdom owls always appear when someone is going to die Caroline says magpies because they steal shiny things Suki says a sparrow oh. Ooh, magpie is good because yeah, like because that. she's a she's a thief why don't you put that in um her tattoo is of a magpie and then make like a little note through two m dashes that they steal shiny things it's like her subtle admission to her theft this haircut costs two hundred dollars. <laughs> I'd pay two hundred dollars for a haircut right now. Oh my god! I don't know if it cuts shows up in chat, but I've got a like an actual ponytail now, and uh, that's only for people who are selling you great bonds in the uh, late nineteen eighties. Um, that is not a thing that a grown man in twenty twenty one should have. This is my COVID hair. Have you heard of uh, kitchen scissors? You can always just, you know, snip, snip. I'll keep it. No under one's gonna see. Keep it under advice. Yes, people will see. I still have to go to work. Oh. <laughs> I mean, who looks at the, you know, back of you anyway? I'm an instructor. I don't stand turn around. in front of people. I just don't turn around. <laughs> you just don't turn around. <laughs> All right, Chad, is there anything else we need to add? Because right now we have Verna. She is a former music teacher, now professor of women's lit at UVic. She lives with her partner on a houseboat. She secretly moonlights as a bank robber, but just does it for fun and burns the money. Loves going for walks and can name most plants. Knows what mushrooms to forage. In her youth, she was a champion kickboxer. Has a tattoo of a magpie, a bird known to steal shiny things, and wears handmade feather earrings. Yeah, that's. Are we, are we doing an Ocean's Eleven type thing where? <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see what comes out of the characters. I'm gonna talk about that a bit at the end because I'm secretly teaching you things, chat. Um. Holly says, "Oh no, worry. You've gone full skis." I have. I look like one of my uncles. Um, <laughs> what is the skis? Skis is like somebody's is sort of trailer trash, sleazy. Um. Oh. 
<clears throat> Suki says, I'm going to see. And then laughs. I'm not sure what she was referencing there. Uh, um, I think she meant the, the cut, snip, snip, ponytail. Oh, bit. oh, I see. Oh, no, no, no. My hair is really difficult to cut. Okay, chat, if we have nothing to add, then let's move on to um, our third. But we have, a, we have a choice here. Okay, so this is our first choice. And I'll give you guys a chance to see it. Give you like 10 seconds here. So commit it to memory. And then I'll show you our second choice. And whichever one speaks to you more, that's the one we're going to do. And it will be our last one. So this is um, this young lady with this very cool makeup uh, and really nice hair. Or this guy, <laughs> who is, if nothing else, Nordic, um, but with a piercing gaze. Who who do we want to uh, who do we want to write a backstory about? This guy, um, or this gal? That guy, that guy is staring into my soul. He he's real creepy looking. <laughs> he is definitely significant. Jesus, um, I don't know why his pupils are so dilated either. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a medical condition. <laughs> okay, everyone's saying uh, the first one, um, not the second. One. Nobody wants to know the backstory on the dilated pupil staring man. He, he has no backstory. That, that, that's, that's his backstory. <laughs> his backstory is he's scary. Um, Holly says the first choice left and went to Burning Man. Uh, this looks classier than Burning Man. I could see Coachella. I don't know how much you know about Burning Man, but uh, it's it's dirty. <laughs> it is not a place I want to go. You sound like you have been. <laughs> Suki and Caroline both basically circle the same point, which is the um, the second one looks like a serial killer. He does, which is why I thought people might want to make a, a backstory. But everyone chose this one. So this uh, beautiful brown-eyed woman um, with uh, gold makeup on her and uh, a little bit of gems. And one thing we want to do, chat, just to give you guys a bit of advice, we want to make sure that she is distinct from our other characters. Um, Cause obviously we could go in a hippie direction, but we kind of already did that. So um, let's see, what are we getting? What's her job, chat? What do you think, Felix? Oof. Uh, actress. Actress is good. What do I think? Well, what are you getting? Like a dancer, like an actual dancer, not like a, mm. an exotic dancer. <laughs> that was not the first thought to come to my mind, exotic dancer. <laughs> well, I mean, I got to clarify because any young woman, people can relate it that way. But that's no, like an actual, like she, she's sort of working this, the, the, the circuits of like backgrounds of videos and stuff like that. Caroline says she's a hacker. She could still be a hacker. An energy healer. I don't want to go. I don't want to go hippie direction though. A busker, maybe. Maybe she does sort of like jazz ballet in the street as a way to make money too. Okay, we got some you know, good I ideas. Like, I like hacker. Okay, I I like hacker as like her moonlight. Um, I'm imposing um a dancer in the daytime. Um. Okay, like a backup dancer, let's say. I, I can see how the three of them work together to rob a bank. Like Jason yeah. is the muscle, Erna yeah. is the brains, and then uh, this girl right here, she she's, she disables the alarms, hides all traces of them. Nathan has a really cool one, which is War Priestess from the Future. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. Okay, okay, so I think I can work that in. Um, she was born, I don't know how many years in the future. Uh, 200. 200? Okay. 200 years in the future. There was a solar event called <laughs> The Happening <laughs> that threw her 
permanently back in time <laughs> as a 14 year old 14 14 year old she doesn't look 14 no she's not anymore um this is just her backstory oh, what um, a weird time machine that would like de-age somebody That's... no they're not gonna de-age people she got knocked back in time she's 14 when she arrived here but she lived here for several years before we meet her oh convoluted i like that <laughs> well if there's anything i'm good at it's pretension and convolution um <clears throat> uh she was training as a war priestess <laughs> to I, I think nathan has to tell us what a war priestess entails i don't know if he does but he can if he wants take over the mantle of her mother the happening was the mark Wahlberg movie where a mysterious wind killed people i know what was the name of our event do you remember that? It was at the end of our romantic uh, lit games one, and we we never described what it was. We just gave it a vague name, but I can't remember what the name was. Does you have a name for it? Uh, we did. I cannot recall. And I just kept referring to it as that because it was never described. <clears throat> um. Okay. So, War Pieces in the Future, she's a hacker. Um, she fended for herself on the main streets of Victoria. <laughs> um, on the main streets of Victoria, eventually taking up Jazz, ballet, and spending her nights hacking. Oh, well, that, what's that, what's that, the, uh, the Bitcoin thing could work into that. How's how's that? Because she's like a hacker. Maybe she try. Maybe he like hires her to like steal some Bitcoin for him from another person through hacking, and that's how they meet. Because I was thinking, like, how do we work that guy in? And she probably knows the worth of bitcoins because she's 200 years into the future. Yeah, good point. We're gonna forget all of this. Really? When, when we have to write about it. <laughs> uh, Nathan says uh, it's a her Holly says it's a hereditary thing, and then Nathan says she leads a battalion of warriors in the human Martian army. Uh, she became a hacker because she knows what Elon Musk did in the future. We have an Elon Musk jar where every time he comes up, I got to put a coin in it, but I'm going to put it in. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm going to add something I haven't added before here. Relationships. Um, and then I'm going to add... Jason Lee um, hires her to retrieve some Bitcoin he lost big on. Dogecoin, yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin or Dogecoin, cryptocurrency. How about that? We'll leave it open. Okay. And what's that? Uh, what's that fighting dance style called? Capoeira. She That's probably cool. knows that. <laughs> um, eventually taking up jazz ballet, and I'll put in brackets and capoeira. Ah, it's got a strange spelling because it is Brazilian. I think that's it. Yeah, that's how I would. I would guess. Uh, close enough. I swapped the and I. Okay, chat. What else do we want to add? I thought you were gonna say she was in a relationship with Jason Lee. I was gonna say no way she would never. No, she said, no, 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 no more romance. We already know what happens when Felix and I try to do romance. Um. The world implodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
We don't have a name yet, chat. What's the name here? I'm I'm so bad at names. Yeah. I uh, normally stare at babynames.com. <laughs> yeah, that's man. right. I usually spend <laughs> six and a half hours searching through historical <laughs> names or something. Um, uh, I mean, it's futuristic. Hmm. How about, how about we call her Ram? Ram? <laughs> <laughs> that is so, I know what you're coming from, part. but that has some connotations that maybe I don't want to invite. Um, uh, CPU, then. <laughs> Evangeline? That's cool. Evangeline? Evangeline. Uh, like uh, Neo, Neo, Neon Genesis? Is that it? Midge? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nathan says Midge. <laughs> I don't know if that's serious. <laughs> it's like a a 1940s housewife name. Uh, Evangeline. I mean, we can go with Evangeline. Quanta. Ooh, I like that. Let's make that the last name. Evangeline Quanta. We could have a middle name, which I guess will be Midge. <laughs> Though it, Nathan should know I hate him for that name. Um... <laughs> All right, chat. So we have Evangeline Midge Quanta. She is a hacker slash backup dancer. She was born 200 years in the future. There was a solar event called The Happening that threw her permanently back in time as a 14 year old. Um, I, I just guess I should also note that she, she then, let me just a second. She then, uh, oh, I know where I can add it. She fended for herself on the main streets of Victoria for the next... She looks like about 21 or something, so for the next seven years. Okay. She was born 200 years in the future. There was a solar event called The Happening that threw her permanently back in time as a 14-year-old. She was training as a war priestess to take over her mother's mantle. She fended for herself on the mean streets of Victoria for the next seven years, eventually taking up jazz ballet and capoeira and spending her nights hacking because she knows what Elon Musk does in the future. <laughs> Jason Lee hires her to retrieve some cryptocurrency he lost big on. All right. Chat, if there's anything else you want to add to any of these three, now's the time to do it. Uh, just one more time, I'll read through them. We had Jason Lee. This was Jason Lee. He's an amateur stock trader and Bitcoin trader. He collects high-end sneakers. He's enrolled in the military, hoping for a tech position, so his background in making a How to Bitcoin WordPress page can be utilized. He has a younger brother, Belix, who his parents are terribly disappointed in. He spends a fortune on simple clothes that he tries to pass off as casual or gym clothes. He's way into his car, which is a 1999 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. He has spent most his money on interior detailing. Then we had Verna, who still doesn't have a last name, if anyone wants to give a last name. I feel like it should be something like transgressive like Q or something, Verna Q, just like a single letter. <laughs> um, the um, occupation is a former music teacher, now professor of women's lit at UVic. She lives with her partner on a houseboat. She secretly moonlights as a bank robber, but just does it for fun and burns the money. Loves going for walks and can name most plants. Knows what mushrooms to forage. In her youth, she was a champion kickboxer. Has a tattoo of a magpie, a bird known to steal shiny things, and wears handmade feather earrings. I guess I should add an end. And then finally, we have Evangeline Midge Quanta. Hacker slash backup dancer. She was born 200 years in the future. Uh, there was a solar event called The Happening that threw her permanently back in time as a 14-year-old. She was training as a war priestess to take over her mother's mantle. She fended for herself on the mean streets of Victoria for the next seven years, eventually taking up jazz ballet and capoeira and spending her nights hacking because she knows what Elon Musk does in the future. Jason Lee hires her to retrieve some cryptocurrency he lost big on. 
Holly says, Verna Osmos. Verna Osmos. Very sci-fi name. Yeah. For what could be a sci-fi story. Who knows? So that's our cast of characters. Um, chat. We have Jason Lee, Verna Osmos, and Evangeline Midge Quanta. Um, and uh, we will most likely be returning to those characters next week and see how they relate to each other, which means that we are at the end of our Lick Games portion. Um, oh, Mom says Midge owns some pet bug. I will add that in. <laughs> if anyone has a preference on the bug, let me know. Um, Felix, how do you feel about our cast of characters? Who's your favorite? Ooh. Uh, I, I'm kind of digging Verna. Verna's pretty cool. I, I do like it, but I, I don't know. I, I'm a sucker for the, the spec fic. I, I do like Evangeline. Takes me back to like late 90s hacker movie kind of stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm into that. <laughs> what, like Johnny Mnemonic? <laughs> uh, yeah, and Hackers with Angelina Jolie. I, I haven't seen that. You, you should watch Hackers. There's my Left on Red recommendation. Um, Holly says, how can you not do the last guy? He's obviously the antagonist. Well, I mean, I gave the chat a choice. Um, they overwhelmingly wanted um, Evangeline. Um, maybe, maybe if we, we don't have time today, but maybe if we have time another time, I can use that. Cause I, you know, I can always replay a, a, a lit game. Caroline says, yeah, last guy's the antagonist. All right. Well, then next week, maybe the way we'll open is we'll sort of figure out a plot. And when we do, we will fill in, if you guys come back, we'll fill in what the antagonist is and, and how he relates to the plot. Because obviously that's pretty crucial to our plotting. Um, so I'll keep him on here, chat. Don't worry. If you come back next week, we'll, we'll develop a character for him. And then we'll start looking at how these people relate and what the plot is. And um, maybe even get some, some writing. All right. Um, which takes us to our last section, which is unqualified advice. Which is a brief section where um, we talk a little bit about our experiences writing. But before I do that, let me just tell you some of the things that are happening here. Um, if you missed it, last in the last month in May, we had a reading from Dana Mahana um, of her poems um, from a little booklet she has, a little chat book called uh, Burn the House Down to Save It from the Fire. And uh, by the way, you can still get some of those books. Uh, there's a link in that video where she reads it aloud and then Spencer and myself um, talk to her about it and really what it turns into is a conversation about just climate change anxiety for millennials and Gen Z and uh, everyone who has taken the time to watch it has given really positive feedback on like just sort of it's a lot of feels that I don't think we intended to bring up but uh, if that's something that worries you I recommend it um, the other thing we did is I read, uh, just on Tuesday, I read um, Russian fairy tales, one of which was a full poem, which was really cool to read and really interesting to me. If you like fairy tales, we do fairy tales every Tuesday at 630. I did Rapunzel the week before. Um, and uh, coming in the future, um, besides more of the varietal show and the lick games that it includes, I am currently working on doing a um, choose your own adventure, uh, which will be kind of about pirates, where I'm going to, it's going to be pre-recorded, um, but I'm going to read, and the pre-recording is so I can do a bit more production, maybe even some acting, uh, and then at the end, I will give Chad a choice as to what they want to see happen and then through the youtube comments or or any of our social media if you let me know what ending you prefer then i will create the section that comes with that ending or what um choice you prefer 
Uh, so that should be coming this month. It'll probably be later in the month. There's a lot more to it than our normal stuff. And also something with Felix. Felix, what were you talking about doing this month? Yeah, I was thinking I could uh, read a part from my recent piece in Prism about my adventures over on this side of the planet. Uh, I, I have no idea how I would go about reading it just because it's so long and I wouldn't know what type of parts to cut to make so that would make sense. So we'll have to figure that out. I mean, we're not really on a schedule here. If you're willing to read the whole thing, I'm pretty sure chat would listen. Chat, would you like not listen minutes. to him read that whole story? Yeah, I mean, it probably it would take 20 minutes. That's fine. Um, uh, we'll, we'll take a vote from chat. But you can read the whole thing if you feel like you're, you're able to do it. And if you want to know the background on that, me and Felix did an interview in a Lick Games episode. Uh, I think it's called Lick Games, Felix's Family and, and Thailand Plane Crash or something like that. Um, it's in our playlist for Lick Games. You can go back and watch it where he gives all the background on it, which is fascinating. Um, but yeah, you would agree to uh, read it this month, which I think is super cool. So uh, that's something to look forward to this month and a reason for you to subscribe because it will let you know when we put one of those videos up. And uh, yeah, um, there's also some other things they are just less confirmed that are happening this month. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so, unqualified advice. This is where we give some advice about being a writer, sort of quick little snippets in case you're a writer. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not like we're super pro writers, but we, we have experience and have been through similar stuff. Is there anything that you wanted to give advice to new writers, Felix? Uh, uh, I, I think I, I often hear established writers, uh, discourage new writers from procrastinating. I, I think they make it out to be some really unnatural tendency to have. I mean, you know, it's almost a crime if you, if you procrastinate. But uh, I remember reading some screenwriting book that talked about how, how commonplace procrastination is actually, even in, you know, really well paid uh, screenwriters. I remember uh, one of the examples mentioned was, was this guy who, before writing every day, he would like sit and stare out his window and he would count like a hundred cars <laughs> and he would not start writing until he, he gets uh, to that number uh, or stuff like that. I, and so I, I, I don't know, like, like I procrastinate. I, I'm, on, I'm on board with you with this. Um, yeah. I think probably the best version of it that I heard was that basically the idea that you're only doing writing when you're f actively writing is um is a lie um and that there are different approaches to the process i think there's a lot of value to just sitting down and writing especially if you're stuck but most of the time what i do is i roll ideas around in my head like a thousand times and then you know whatever fits or feels right then i'll start writing it i don't know if that's the same for you but it I, I also think there's a, a level of just going out and absorbing the world that you're writing about and, and, and like engaging in events and seeing people in the road and then you go, oh, that's interesting, maybe I could work that in. And I think the idea that you should just be locked away for 10 hours a day of writing sends the message not to do that. So I think that's great advice. Right. Yeah, I, I, I do do that. I do just think about writing while I'm doing, going about my everyday life. I, yeah. I think a part of that is because I, I don't want to write stuff that I'll have to delete later on. <laughs> so I want to make sure that what I'm writing, like, it'll probably work, be working to the story uh, in the end. And so, so, yeah, I work it all on my head, like all the puzzle pieces, and then I write. And I don't really do that. I delete a lot of what I write, but I still agree that I spend a lot of time kind of feeling what could work. Nathan has an interesting question that I'm going to answer before we wrap up here. What are your current pandemic writing habits? I know what mine are. It's a very short story, but um, what are yours? Uh, yeah, I've been working on my thesis. Oh, that's right. And so I have a mentor assigned to me this summer, uh, Doretta Lau, who is a Vancouver writer. And we meet every week. And then I think every two weeks, I got to hand in a certain amount of pages. So that's been keeping me writing. I know Doretta Lau. I don't know why. Not 
Not like personally. personally. No, my oh. God, I don't know anybody. <laughs> but uh, okay, okay. Fun fact, though, she she is like a close friend of Kevin, our oh, previous mentor at Kevin the Writer Studio. Who, by the way, I should have mentioned, Kevin Chong did kind of like a redux of the book I recommended, The Plague, um, that you can buy now where he sets it in Vancouver. He did it before the pandemic happened, but let me tell you, great timing for him. Um, and it's yeah. it, it's a really interesting take on, on the themes that Camus talks about. It's also called The Plague, Kevin Chong, The Plague. Uh, my, can you imagine? If Kevin was just like a little bit slower on publishing that, that would not get published. No, no. Well, it got published before the pandemic happened. And then when the pandemic right. happened, it kind of had a second life. Um, so if you want something more modern and if you're in Vancouver, more local, Kevin Chong's Pandemic, he was our uh, mentor. Or sorry, Pandemic Plague, uh, the plague. Um, and he, I, I've, there's this one really cool scene where like the sky train stops and then reverses back in because that's when they've decided to shut down Vancouver. Um, my current pandemic writing habits are actually quite prolific, uh, but a lot of that has to do with having a venue, having people who are reading it and having, you know, opportunities to do things I've wanted to do in the past that have just been passing thoughts like doing choose your own adventures and you know reading things aloud and keeping old story forms alive with fairy tales that's been really invigorating for me and i know that dana was saying the same thing it it, it sort of it breathes new life prior to that nothing i i basically when shutdown happened from april 1st to about may 15th i was laid off and just sitting at home like most people I wrote almost a hundred pages, single spaced, of my novel. A hundred office pages, which is a hell of a lot more in a book. Um, which is the most writing I've ever done, ever, in that uh, period of time, or maybe ever, on one thing. And then when I went back to work, I shut down. Um, it, and it wasn't just work, it was just how how draining this became because at that point it was like two months and then may it would probably get better if you remember um and then that definitely didn't happen and then the longer it dragged on the more i was just in survival mode eating chips and playing animal crossing um, <laughs> which shout out to animal crossing it got me through quite a few months of the pandemic um so that that would be my writing habits uh i shut down for a good 10 months of it um, but yeah, I mean, things are better now for sure, but I liked your advice. I liked your advice. Um, there is a point at which you kind of have to call it with procrastination, be like time to sit down and fucking write. But, um, there is definitely room in a writer's life to, pr to procrastinate, but in the sense that you're not writing, but you're still sort of observing your world. All right. Which means we are at the end of the show. Um, how do you feel about uh, our new format, Felix? Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad I'm not here next week because I don't want to be the one putting this story together. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Avalon and Dana watch this and, and what they're walking into. Um, but I will say, chat, like when you write, characters change on the page. And I think, you know, part of what I'm trying to do here is walk you through like one approach to writing uh so if you guys want you can take these characters and what i would recommend is just sort of set up a situation where they'll all interact and and write what you see and hear in your head and it doesn't need to be good at first um most of what we do isn't good ever so um um uh, that's a lot of what a story is. It's just a group of people that have sort of different backgrounds and different wants and certain conflicts. We didn't quite get to the point of looking at their desires yet, but we'll try and do that next week. Um, and then you just sort of wander with them and see where they go. Um, okay. Well, Felix, Wildcard Wong, recommended Final Destination 1 and 2, helped me write some characters and said, don't worry about procrastination. 
Anything else you want to add before we sign off? I feel like we got through a lot today, actually. I think so, too. In less time, too. Uh, let me know, chat, how you guys feel about the new format. Um, if there's anything you would tweak or change. Or, as always, let me know if there's a lit game you want us to do. Uh, because, for sure, we will do that. Uh, my name is Rory. This is The Varietal. By the way, it's my story up this week. It's part one of four parts. Um, it's called The Deadwoods Reach. And um, I'm not going to say much more about it. Uh, I think the less I say, the better. Uh, it is definitely... Yeah, I'm not going to say much about it. The link is down in the description to our webpage and my story. Uh, and it's just part one for now. But we will see those other parts go up soon enough. Felix, thanks so much for coming by. In chat... I love you all. Thank you so much for coming by and enjoying our show. And I will talk to you soon. Also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for I Don't Lit. And give me a like if you haven't already. <laughs> and subscribe. And and, and Bye everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>